What in the heck is happening, my home dogs? This video, we're gonna be talking about constants. Before we dive in, I wanna give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. C++ Builder is a C++ IDE with awesome GPU accelerated native UI libraries. So what does that mean in English? <laughs> Basically, we can create applications for different platforms so Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, and we can use their UI tools to build user interfaces that are native to these different platforms. So you can make your user interface once, and then what you can do is you can change the UI to make it perfectly designed for your target platforms. So you can take advantage of native capabilities for these platforms. So if you need a C++ IDE with visual designers, check out our sponsor. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. And by the way, the community edition is free so you can get started right away. Now let's get back to constants. When we create a variable like so, int x equals five, this here, this value here, is known as a literal. You may also hear constant. So this is a literal constant. Constants are very important and they're fundamental in any programming language. We need them in order to assign values to variables and to use inside of expressions. But that's not exactly the constant we're talking about here in this video. So what exactly are we gonna be talking about in this video? We're gonna be talking about what's known as a symbolic constant. And what that is, is when we prefix a variable with the keyword const. So now it's not really a variable now, is it? Ooh. Well, it's still usually called a variable, so people usually say a constant variable, which just kinda of sounds dumb when you say it out loud. But anyways, what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be talking about symbolic constants. So I think the naming here isn't entirely 100% clear. There's a lot of confusion out there. So try not to be too uptight with the naming. Basically, when people say constant, they could refer to this type of constant. They could refer to this type of constant. So now that you understand the naming, let's talk a little bit about what this means here. All right, so first thing, this creates a read-only variable. So what do I mean by read-only? Because we're actually writing to it here. Well, it's only read-only after you declare the variable. So here we're assigning a value to it, but if we wanted to later change that value to say 10, that's not gonna work. We're gonna get a compiling error. You can see, if I scroll up just a little bit, you can see it says error, cannot assign to variable x with const qualified type. So what does it mean by const qualified? Well, anytime you hear the word qualified, it means to basically prefix something with a more descriptive term. So we're prefixing int with const. This is similar to how we can do something like standard colon colon c out. What we're doing is we're qualifying where this object is coming from. It's coming from the standard namespace. So similar thing when it comes to const, we're qualifying the type int with the keyword const. The point is we can't change the variable value. Now when it comes to the name of a constant, there are a lot of conventions out there. Some people will capitalize the first letter, so like if we add xylophone, other people will prefix with a K, so you might see K underscore. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of prefixing things with a type identifier. That's the basis of a type of Hungarian notation, which basically is when you embed the type of a variable in the name. I'd say it's generally frowned upon and it's not widely accepted to use that type of Hungarian notation. So what exactly do I mean by that? Here's an extreme example. We could do something like int, int age, and set that equal to five. Well, we're basically redundantly putting int here, so when people use age, they know it's an integer. This doesn't add a lot of information. For one, C++ has static type checking, so usually when we use a variable, if it's of the wrong type, we're gonna get an error. And two, it's just extra information we have to type out, <laughs> which makes our variable names longer. So I'm not going to go with the K prefix for constants. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave them as is. All right, so enough jibber jabber. <laughs> what else do I have to say about constants? Well, their purpose is that we can create a constant and we can use it throughout our code and we don't have to worry about the value being changed. I have read online that there are ways to change constant values, so I don't know if it's 100% foolproof, but for most practical purposes, we can trust that this value is always going to be five. The value of this variable will, will be five. So we might wanna use a value throughout the entire program. For example, we could have some setting that has a possible value of three, and then anywhere throughout our code, we can get that value. One thing you should know is that if you don't assign to it with the declaration, you're not going to be able to do it after either. So even if we haven't assigned anything here yet, if we try to assign it here and compile, we still get an error. 
So that is one way to create a constant. Another way that you might see is up here, and it looks something like this. Pound define, and you could create a variable, let's say x, and give it the value 10. Typically, you'll see this in all uppercase letters. This was the way it was done in C programming, and it's also valid in C++. Of the two options, I would say the previous const keyword is preferred, mainly because you can put a type with it. So you can go with this technique if you want. I'm gonna prefer the const technique because this is going to be scoped to a particular block. So in this case, it's only going to be available to the main function. And anytime you can kind of restrict the scope of something, it's generally a good thing. There is a third type of constants you might see, and those are enum constants. What you can do is say enum and then put curly braces and inside of here, create your constant. So what we could do is say y is equal to 100, for example. And this is good because we're not gonna be able to change it. So if we do y is equal to 50, we're gonna get an error. And you can see it's not letting us reassign that value. So when we try to assign another value to y, we get an error. So to conclude, there are three type of constants we talked about. We talked about prefixing a type with const. We talked about what's actually known as macros using the define directive up here. And then we talked about enum constants down here. Which one to choose? Hmm, that's a research project for you. Most scenarios, they're all gonna do basically the same thing. Just choose one you like and go with it. <laughs> that's all I got for you guys in this video. Please be sure to check out the next video. We're gonna talk about something new. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so please be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.